We're in the lab checking out the latest Broadcom RAID card. And yes, I know latest and RAID card isn't something that typically goes together a whole lot, especially when we're talking about NVMe storage. But to be fair to Broadcom, they've done a lot of engineering in this card to get it ready for NVMe to make RAID cards back on the menu for NVMe storage. Historically, NVMe SSDs progressed so quickly that their performance levels were so high that RAID cards really were a gating factor and slowed them down in their ability to really sing. But now Broadcom's on their third generation of silicon for this card. This is the 9670W. This is a 16 laden card. And what we've done is we've put this into a Supermicro single use server, rigged together some cabling with these two JBOFs. Inside each one of these, we've got eight Micron 7450 SSDs. They're 6.4 terabyte SSDs. What we wanted to see is what is the profile of the latest and greatest NVMe RAID card and how will it let these 16 drives stretch their legs? Now these guys, the 7450s inside, individually would have the ability to, to drive more performance on their own than through the RAID card because we're just using one Gen 4 by 16 slot. But when we say limited, you have to have some degree of scale, right? We're talking about 28 gigs a second available through this card. So while the drives may individually in aggregate perform better than they would through the RAID card, we're still gonna pick up a lot of benefits from having the RAID card in the system. So beyond just the performance aspect though, RAID cards bring much more to the table. Of course, data resiliency is the big thing, right? RAID is just well understood as the de facto standard for enterprise data resiliency. There's not much doubt about that. But there is a performance implication too. When we look at something like Windows Storage Spaces or Windows Server, RAID 0 and 1 do really well there, but RAID 5 and 6 don't. So having something like a RAID card to aggregate all those SSDs makes a good deal of sense. And if we look at something like vSAN in the software-defined storage world, the challenge there is that you need multiple nodes to get to the same level of resilience that you can get with one RAID card. When it comes to mainstream enterprise servers, RAID cards are still very, very important. And in fact, that's how Dell and HPE and, and many others sell their systems with the RAID cards because customers want the resiliency and the performance blend that RAID cards offer. Dell's managed to condense this down to a very small unit. This even has the backup battery on it. In the Dell R760, you get two of these cards, which means we can take two batches of eight SSDs, each going to a different RAID card that's NUMA balanced to optimize performance in mainstream servers like this. So one of the really neat things about Dell's strategy is it doesn't take a PCIe card slot in the back. It's an integrated solution right next to the back plane, and it gives customers the data protection, resiliency, and performance that the RAID cards offer and 16 drives of NVMe storage in a 2U box, which is pretty good considering the capacities of these drives are all the way up to 30 terabytes now and 60 plus terabytes this year. And speaking of large SSDs, another great benefit of RAID cards is the ability to aggregate these SSDs into a single volume. So if we're talking 30 terabyte drives, for instance, times eight to one of those RAID cards in an R760, now you've got the ability to theoretically make a volume up to 240 terabytes in size. That's really quite impressive and depending on your applications and your needs, that may be very beneficial. In certain platforms, taking advantage of drives in that way is impossible. In VMware, for instance, you just can't do that. There's not a notion of software RAID. And of course, I know we'll get a lot of hits in the comments on, well, what about OpenZFS? That's ultimately very flexible and capable of these things. And while that's true, that's still not the same sort of deployment model that goes out with enterprise servers like ProLiance and PowerEdges. There's definitely a place for OpenZFS, but it's just not in the mainstream server market necessarily. So one of the other big challengers in the RAID management group is the GPU-based systems or solutions. So we've seen these from Grade. We've reviewed that card twice in both of its iterations, and we really like the Grade solution and others that use GPUs to aggregate and provide data services and push the, the boundaries of what you can do with NVMe storage. But those cards aren't universally compatible with as much stuff out there, including a variety of hypervisors and, and operating systems. So that's another advantage that RAID cards offer, especially when we're looking at mainstream enterprise workloads. RAID cards can also be great because they've got a dedicated engine on the board. That means that this card is doing all the computational work, or most of it, to manage the SSDs and all the data services it provides. This frees up the CPU from having to do those operations. If we look at a software-defined world, for instance, the CPU gets taxed, the RAM gets taxed a little bit more 
to manage the storage and the data services. That's another big win for RAID cards. For our testing, we ran the Micron 7450s through a series of scenarios to get a good feeling for what the performance profile looks like. Looking at sequential reads, in JBOD we saw a little bit more than 28 gig a second, and RAID 10 and RAID 5 were both right at 28, so pretty consistent performance throughout that workload. So on the right side, as we look at JBOD, we saw pretty similar performance to reads at uh, almost 27 gig a second. As we apply RAID, then things change because the card has to do more work. With RAID 10, we saw about 10 gig a second, and RAID 5 picked up a little bit to a little over 13 gig a second. Now if we switch our focus to small block random transfers, we see the 9670 did really well in read performance versus the JBOD baseline figure of 7 million IOPS. RAID 10 and RAID 5, optimal numbers, so when the RAID's in good health, we're right in line at 7 million IOPS. And then when we go to a rebuild scenario, we give up about half the performance. In this scenario, we failed a single SSD and then had the RAID group rebuilding. So overall, in a real-world scenario, losing half of the performance isn't that big of a deal considering the RAID is coming back together. With SSDs, it shouldn't take all that much time for a RAID rebuild. In the same scenario, we take a look at 4K random write, and in JBOD mode, we're about uh, 6.2 million IOPS. RAID 10 is about 2.2, RAID 5 about a million. And in the rebuild, the writes actually don't see that much damage. We only see a little bit of loss in the RAID 5 uh, from a IOPS perspective, which is actually pretty impressive. I mentioned that we had tested during a rebuild scenario. In RAID 10, when we drop out a 7450 from the RAID group and then add it back in, it took just about an hour to get uh, the rebuild done at about 10 minutes per terabyte. The RAID 5 group took a little bit over 82 minutes to complete the same task with a rebuild speed of about 14 terabytes a minute. So as we look at our experience with this card and the overall performance of these JBOFs, the Micron SSDs, and the Supermicro server, I'm gonna be honest. We went into this review thinking, oh man, Broadcom, you're coming at us with a RAID card. And I think I might have even made some mention of a dot matrix printer, which they still bring up every time we get on the phone with them. And it's not meant as a sign of disrespect. Well, I guess maybe it was a little bit, but we just really didn't know when this card came in what to expect from its performance capabilities. And this is in the face of knowing that Dell and HPE and other server providers were going hard in the paint in delivering NVMe RAID card solutions for their servers. Now, they're doing this because their customers want it. They want hardware RAID. They've got solutions that need it, and this card can deliver on those solutions. If you want the highest possible performance out of your server, do you want a hardware RAID card? Probably not. GPU RAID card may be the way to get the maximum possible performance out of a system. But for most customers, the trade-off of data resiliency, uptime, SLAs, and performance, the mix that this card can deliver, is really the important combo that they're after and that's why this card's going to be the default standard in mainstream servers throughout the enterprise.